Lisa Drew, and you're listening to the amazing Pam and Don. Hello, and welcome to Christmas Movie Spotlight. I'm your host, Don Mack, and I'm here with the lovely and talented and wonderful, my friend, Pam. Hey, Pam. Hey, you know what? All these times listening to you say, I'm Don Mack. I need to come up with a second name, so maybe I'll be Pam Mack. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, Don Mac is not my real name. You know, it's my radio name. I know. Uh, it, it just fits, you know. Actually, the little thing about Don Mac is, is someone gave me that as a nickname years and years ago, and um, and Mac is like the first part of my maiden. And so I was always either called Mac or Don Mac or something. So it just kind of stuck. And so when I got into radio, it. I said, you know, that's going to be my radio name. So there you go, folks. A little backstory on me. Um, but Pam, you know, I would say use your last name, but probably not a good idea no. when you're in radio. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although you have no. And, uh, <laughs> with it, you know, in radio for the sake of radio. But yeah, understandable why you don't use that. The same reason I don't use my real last name. So, you know, there you go. Yeah, and there's no way to shorten my maiden name. I mean, it just I can't even think of something to come out of it because it's such an unusual last name. So <laughs> we're sticking with Pam, I guess. <laughs> Pam, Pam works, you know. Um, and uh, But, yeah, so it's really great to be here with you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. And let me tell you, you're going to be glad that you did because we have got a great interview lined up for you. And our special guest this evening is Lisa DeRue. Now, you may or may not know who she is, but I would imagine that if you've ever watched Hallmark, which I'm sure the majority of our fan base has, <laughs> you have seen mm-hmm. her on Hallmark, has been in so many movies, and it's just amazing. And, in fact, if you are – any kind of fan of Nikki DeLoach or Andrew Walker, then you have seen Lisa DeRue playing in movies with those two. Um, she plays some great, amazing roles, and she's done a lot of stuff outside of Hallmark. She's kind of all over the place. But that was probably, of all the interviews we've done this season, that was undoubtedly the funnest interview because she just she kept us laughing the entire time. She is just, she's a comedian at heart, and she's done comedy, and so she just is very witty and off the cuff, and Oh my! As you'll see in just a few moments, but it was a fun, fun time. I think Pam and I we we laughed so hard. <laughs> my stomach is still hurting from all the laughter. Seriously, I think I have a permanent smile on my face. So. <laughs> you know, just her name is out of mind. She just she was just so incredibly delightful. And but um, in the time that we spoke with her, which it seemed like, I mean, she and I, I think the three of us could have sat and talked for hours. It was just kind of, mm-hmm. she was just one of where you just feel like you've known her forever, and she'd be one of those people you could just go hang out and have coffee with, with Bailey's in it, by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, <laughs> which, it's not a joke, folks. But nonetheless, I mean, um, you know, the thing about her was it was just fun to talk with her, and she just made you feel like she'd known you forever. And it was just girl chat. It was just a fun time. And uh, so you will get to experience that all in a few minutes. But she has done a lot. And we talked about a lot in the time that we had her on. It was crazy. I think, what, we talked to her maybe all of, what, 30 minutes? And she packed a lot in. She packed a lot in. Well, you know, it helps that she talks really fast. I mean, huh. I just, I was like amazed at how fast that she can talk. <laughs> you know, there's not a, a lot of people that can talk that fast. And I bet if we gave her a rhyme or two or something to say very quickly, she could do it with no problem whatsoever. Well, true. And the other thing I was thinking is that sometimes when people's adrenaline is flowing, and I kind of got the vibe that her adrenaline was really flowing during that interview. Um, I know I can be a fast talker, and being from the South, you don't often think people in the South talk fast, but I can. But sometimes my talking will accelerate when I'm excited or my adrenaline is flowing. And um, so I just felt like, you know, it was such a good vibe coming from her all the way around. So, um, so yeah, but it, but just brace yourself. Buckle up for this interview because 
it is one of a kind, and you are going to seriously enjoy it as much as Pam and I did. Oh, yes, definitely. And don't forget to catch Lisa in the holiday movie coming up on December 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, and it's called Christmas Lost and Found, which airs on Lifetime. I am so looking forward to this because oh, she yeah. told us somewhat about it, but, of course, we got to watch it to see how it ends. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. And as a side note, um, she has already appeared in another movie this holiday season on Hallmark Channel, Reunited at Christmas. Speaking of Nikki DeLoach, mm-hmm. um, Nikki stars in the movie, and uh, Lisa is supporting uh, character, and she does a phenomenal job. And Nikki and Lisa on screen are just amazing anyway. So if you have not seen Reunited at Christmas yet, you definitely want to be sure to catch that before the holiday season is over. It is amazing. Um, and she gave a great inside story about that movie, too. So you want to be sure to listen to the interview to get that as well. Yes, so without exactly. further ado, we bring you our interview now with Miss Lisa DeRue. Enjoy the show. Thank you very much for calling in and taking the time to speak with us. Um, We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So (laughs) let's get started. Um, And the one question that we try to keep as part of our tradition in our show that we ask our guests Mm -hmm. is how who, what, where, when (laughs) did you decide to become an actress? I mean, I know you probably get that question often, but there's always answers that we haven't heard yet. I, to be very honest, I never wanted to be an actor at all. I was going to be an athletic therapist and I kind of slipped into it, which I know kind of ticks off some actor people, but, but the truth is I, I, I was going away to school for, uh, I played a lot of hockey growing up and I was going to go down to the States um, and play hockey. And in my last year, my grade 12 year, I dislocated my shoulder about three times. I did it three times. I think I did like August or September and then December and then March. And it got to the point where it was ridiculous. Like it really needed to be fixed. So I thought I'll stay home for the year, get it fixed, recuperate, and then go the following year. And uh, my, uh, my mom suggested, why don't you just go to university in town? Like I was living at home in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is just, straight up from Minnesota. Uh, and uh, she said, why don't you just take some easy classes? So I took what I thought would be really easy, which was just an English, a sociology, and then a theater course. Cause I thought, oh, that'd be fun. Um, and just the first thing we did was we did a little report. We had to go watch uh, rainbow stage was a local musical theater company and they were putting on chorus line. And I went and I watched this girl who was playing Val, the character who does the song dance 10 looks three. And it's, she's doing these fan kicks and she's belting her guts out singing and it just looked fun. And I kind of got bugged and went, wow, I want to do that. And within about two weeks, I just had made this decision that I was going to completely shift gears, went home and told my parents I wasn't going to play hockey anymore to which my dad all but cried and uh, signed up for about (laughs) nine hours of nine hours of dance a week to two hours of singing lessons. And I I started taking acting full time at the university of Winnipeg and just kind of went from there and then just by luck of the way things worked out eventually drove a girlfriend to an audition just to drive her not to go but just to drive her um and it was an mtv movie called everybody's doing it and i the casting director heard my laugh because i have a pretty distinct laugh and so she had me come back for an audition and i ended up booking it and it was my very first experience on set it was like 16 days and the lead was a girl who now she's a lead in masters of sex lizzie kaplan and another actress who does mm-hmm. a lot of homework stuff, Brooke Dorsey. And we were like mm-hmm. at the time 19 or 20 or whatever. And then ended up while trying to finish my theater degree uh, was doing a stage combat class. Turned out that the teacher who was in charge of that was also the stunt coordinator for all of stunt in Manitoba films. So he got me into doing stunts on camera, which got me into the union and then ended up doing some musical theater and theater back home in Winnipeg, but booked a show um, in Winnipeg, which then, was a series and I got a call from an agent in Vancouver saying my client plays your boyfriend and I heard you don't have an agent. And next thing you know, I'm moving to Vancouver and it all just kind of over the course of about five years happened very organically and naturally. And it was never something that I was planning, but yeah, here we are now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but you haven't heard that one before. <laughs> no, yeah. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty crazy. 
Uh, well, I tell you, that is amazing. I mean, and <laughs> and for someone who had no intentions of going to acting, you really um, have had quite the career, a, a vast career, Thanks. I should say. And and every role you played, I'm sure, you know, is, spe- is, is special each in their own way. But what mm-hmm. is one role, if you could only choose one, that you mm-hmm. portrayed that impacted you the most personally? Probably the very first series that I did. It was a Canadian series called Less Than Kind. It was a kind of a dark comedy series along the lines of an Arrested Development. And it took off in Canada but because it was Canadian. And this was before Hulu and Netflix and all that was really picking up or and, and also really picking up Canadian content. It really wasn't exposed to the American viewership. So we, did, we just didn't have the viewership that that say like a Hallmark show has or something like that. But our, our showrunner was a gentleman by the name of Mark McKinney, who was one of the original members of kids in the hall. And so now he's on a show called superstore, a very well-known um, comedic actor. So it was my first real introduction to comedy. And the first time that I really got to take on a character longer than, you know, a matter of one film. And she was this great lovable villain who she's that character. She's the girlfriend that always causing trouble but because the writers had heard that I had done scent work, they made her very physically um, hilarious in terms of all her scenes with her boyfriend. It's always something where, because he was a lot bigger than me. He's like six foot three. So when they get in a fight, you know, she'd be that girl like jumping to attack him and stuff. Like it was very physical. And uh, it just, it went on for, I think, four, what did we do, four seasons? And uh, it, it just, not only was it kind of just like thrown into the world of comedy and taught by someone like Mark McKinney, who is, a comedy icon when it comes to something like kids in the hall, but then also too to get to develop a character and to have them specifically write it towards what your strengths were was just a dream. And to this day, I haven't really gone back to that um, scope of comedy where you're, you're getting to play with it that much. So that was one that really, I was so lucky to fall into that right, right off the hop. And it taught me a lot about the business and kind of got me to where I am now. Oh, wow. wow. That is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so her name was Chandra. You know, I, she was the, <laughs> the bleach blonde I villain. We're gonna be, I have a feeling we're going to be saying wow a lot with everything that you're telling <laughs> us because everything everything is so exciting and so amazing. Oh, thank you. It happens so quickly and things are just like all your ducks are in a row and you may not have planned them that way, but that's the way they're right. falling. And I just love that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Well, you know, as our listeners may not know, I should say, Lisa has received three Leo nominations, and one for, was for that role of Chandra mm-hmm. on the HBO series Less Than Kind. Um, yeah. Another one was for the role of James Kahn's daughter in Pregolan, and another one yeah. for your role of Amy in The Good Night Kiss. Mm-hmm. Um, what do these nominations mean to you, and what was your first thought that went through your head when you received the first one? Uh, well, I think I was kind of surprised because you never, you don't think of stuff like that. I mean, the words, it's it's really sweet, but it's not why you love what you do. It's just kind of one of those things afterwards that you go, oh, man, other people get it. Like, I was excited about the character, but they get it. So I would definitely say with the first one, it was it was for Chandra for Less Than Kind. And so that felt really good because I had moved to Vancouver. I was new to the industry out here, still trying to get my feet wet. And so to understand or to, I guess, to, how do I word that, to, to see that other people again got what we were trying to do with the show and that they got what I was trying to do the character really meant a lot and then with the second one with um with the uh, Pregolan with James Khan's daughter that one felt extremely good because I had worked really hard on that character I really really I fell in love with that character the minute I read it for the audition and the woman who wrote the show Sonia Bennett who was is amazing is amazing and was amazing to work with when I first moved to Vancouver the very first event that I went to someone had said to me if you want to be a well-respected actress in Vancouver you need to be like Sonia Bennett and I remember thinking like that's the landscape of, of what a brilliant actress looks like in Vancouver and so then you know mm-hmm. however many years later to get a phone call from her what I think is going to be a Skype callback but it's her just telling me you know you booked it I want you to be my sister this kind of stuff really meant a lot and then, and then you add James Conn uh, to it, and you're going, are you kidding me? Like, he's the guy from The Godfather. Right? <laughs> and, then, and then the third one for Amy, was, that was great because it was this awesome little indie short film with a brilliant actor, David Lewis, who does a lot of, of I'm sure you guys have seen him a lot in, on all the Hallmark stuff, or he works a lot in Vancouver in general. But um, we had to do 29 scenes in a matter of, it's a, we shot it over a weekend. 
and it's the idea of this relationship where, especially women, not, not just women, but especially women, we tend to, you know, kind of have this expectation. And so the idea is it's what an entire relationship looks like in a woman's point of view before she's even gotten out of the car with him on the first date. She runs through the whole scenario in her head. So we did these 29 scenes over, I think we did like 16 hour days for two days in a row. And it was just like blood, sweat and tears. Like nobody really made any money. And what came out was this awesome little indie. So again, the fact that people got it was just awesome. So yeah, o- overall they all felt great, but they all felt great for different reasons which was nice. Well, congratulations on all your nominations. And um, oh, thank you. And speaking of all the tremendous actors you've worked with, James Kahn, I mean, the list goes on and on. Lacey Chabert, <laughs> Rose McGowan, Allison yeah. Sweeney, I mean, and yeah. on and on and on. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and you undoubtedly have become one of mine and Pam's favorites to watch, you know, on Hallmark. Oh, ladies, and just thank wherever. you. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, when I know you're going to be, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be good. Because you always play the best, you know, roles. And, um, and just what you bring to our <laughs> is is really really good and um, yeah, but is there, you know of all the people you've worked with in your career mm-hmm. there's someone in particular you would like to work with that you haven't yet oh gosh well someone that I was in love with as a kid that I just wanted to be was actually Bette Midler of all people I just I, she was sassy I remember seeing Beaches and then I think it was oh I'm gonna mess this up I think it was called Stella it was a, a movie that she was the lead in and she was just sassy and funny and she was she wasn't your typical looking ingenue and she just, you know, she killed it. I remember seeing her in like first wives club and it just loved her. And then mm-hmm. to suddenly see her do these big Broadway shows. Cause I love to sing and stuff. So to the idea of doing a big broad or um, a, a one woman show, like the style of like a one woman Broadway type of show, but I don't know if it's ever actually on Broadway, but she's just so entertaining. I mean, to some of the viewers, they may be going who, but, but to me as a kid growing <laughs> up, I just remember being absolutely fascinated with her, her charisma and the fact that she was so different. So that would be somebody that, you know, I don't even, I don't even know if she still does stuff, but I, that would be one that I would go on my bucket list. Of. If I could work with, I would say Bette Midler. Yeah, definitely Bette Midler. Well, and, and, you know, in, mm-hmm. in saying that, it makes me think that if they ever do a biopic of her life <laughs> and her life story, you would be perfect for that. I, I think you could pull it off, honestly. And, um, you know, you've you've got the whole acting, singing, all the total package thing, um, even the stunt action, if you will. And so I just think, wow, you know, that would be so cool to, like, have her cast in it. And then you play the younger Bette Midler. I, I think you could do it, hands down. I'm with you. Hello. Hi. Yeah, her Hi. We're back. Did we, drive. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> there was a giant <laughs> crash, and then it told me technical difficulties. I was like, uh-oh, I better call back. <laughs> oh, no. Did oh, you hear my what, gosh. What, what was the last thing you heard that I said? You said something about, well, if there's ever a biopic, and then it went, <laughs> Okay, well, let me be oh. sure, because I was like, Oh no, she hung up because of what I said. No, I'm just joking. I was okay. like, hey. I'm that angry. How dare you compliment me? For <laughs> real. So, uh, no, seriously, I was saying that speaking of Bette Miller, it's interesting that you mentioned that because if they ever did a biopic of her life, and it would be great to see you cast as the younger version of Bette Midler because you're kind of the, the total package. I mean, you sing, you act. I mean, you've even got the stunt, you know, thing in there. Yeah. And, I just think your gumption that you bring to the roles that you play. Um, I mean, when I see you on Hallmark, I'm always thinking, you know, you're so savvy and you're witty and just what you bring to a role. And it's, it's, a, it's really reminiscent of what you've seen Bette Midler do on screen. You know, she's got well, that thank same you. Kind of thing. Gosh. So I would love to see that happen. I hope it happens one day and you're casting I that because – I, I love you for starting that rumor. Let's just put that out there in the world and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> but let's also talk about the fact that you just said gumption. That made me even happier. That is the best compliment I've ever gotten. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I know what you're going to bring to it because you've always kind of like got this off-the-cuff remark um, comeback for as part of your dialogue. And I know it's scripted, but it's you really own it and you do it well. And and Bette, oh, Midler, Bette Midler has that about her anyway. And when, she, yeah. when you see her on screen, she brings that too. And um, think- Bette could play the older, you know, like herself, but yeah. as you know, 
current to age, and you could do the younger verse. So there would be your opportunity to work with Bette Midler. So, um, Done. Done. Here. I think my grandma would just say that that means I'm cheeky. That was what I was always told as a kid. Like, you're so cheeky, which as you're older, yeah. so many people are, are more accepting because you learn the boundaries of when it's appropriate to be cheeky and when it's not. But as a kid, it was just like stuff coming out of your mouth that your parents are going, oh, God, please, please stop. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that's how you work that muscle. You got you got to try it out, right? <laughs> right that's right. Well, yeah. um, it's the note that growing up you played hockey, and uh, mm-hmm. and early on in your career you were a stunt performer, as I mentioned. And mm-hmm. and in what ways did playing hockey prepare you for that aspect of your career? And do you still have occasion to do any stunt performances today? Um, I know I haven't done any stunt stuff now, and because what I realized when I moved out especially out West was that the people who are true stunt performers, like I, I was a little, you know, a young, you know, 20 year old something that, that was athletic and willing to do whatever. But the people who really take that on as a career, they train for hours a day and they get no credit for it, which I mean, not to say that that's why I wouldn't do it, but just to to note that these people are insanely talented and work really hard and, and no one ever goes like, yay, that was a great stunt in the movie. They just go, Oh my God, did you see that actor do this? You're like, that wasn't really them. Uh, so I, I think I realized really quickly that you either go that field or you go, you know, outside of stunt and go into just the acting component, which I was kind of more drawn to. Um, in terms of how hockey definitely prepared me for all of it, stunts, yes, for sure. But, well, I guess essentially that's what got me started in it because the coordinator said to me, you know, I, I love that you you get it, meaning if I tell you to drive from point A to point B, you, you would do that. But if a kid runs out in front of you, you know, you know not to just run it over because you have to get to point B. Like there's a certain aspect I think about athletes who practice, practice, practice a certain play, but then on the day in the game, if it doesn't go that way, you just adapt. So that was something that really translated into doing the stunt work, but it also helps with the film industry because I think ever since I started, I don't know if it's just because of getting into it maybe a little bit later than some people. I've never really taken that idea of, Oh, I was rejected or this or that. I always looked at it kind of like if you were trying out for a team in the fall, say a hockey team or what have you, and you didn't make it, you had a year to figure out why it didn't work and go back and try out again. And no part of my brain went, oh, they didn't like me, I'm rejected. It went, oh, okay, I got to fix something or work on something so that I can, you know, get back at it the following year. So that part of it makes you, I think, a little bit more, for me anyways, a little bit more resilient mentally, which I've really enjoyed and I think has really helped me to not take things so um personally and that would be some great advice to pass on to any newcomers in the acting industry you know Mm -hmm. on how to take those no's not as a personal offense Mm -hmm. against you you know that you're not good enough you're just maybe you know they may be looking for something different that's all well that's I have you know because I coach to to kids and I say to them it's it's like if you're building your team you don't need you know, seven people that can all play point guard on your basketball team, you probably just need two or three, and it's no offense to the other ones. You just, you need a certain balance on your team, and that's how it works for a film. They're they're casting something based on what they need, and you just not might not be the right fit for that particular thing. So it's not, it's a business. It's not personal. But it's hard. It's hard right. to get that across to people when they're learning. Exactly. Well, I'm a huge mm-hmm. hockey fan, so I love that we, we play hockey. Yeah, um, I still do. I, I play co with my husband. <laughs> You what? That? Sorry. sorry, what did oh. you say? <laughs> I said I don't watch any other sports but hockey, so there you go. Who's your team? Who do you love? Well, which team I live in love? Chicago. I live in Chicago. Oh. So, um, well, Jonathan Taves is from my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> there you oh, go. Yes, yes. Yeah. The captain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, oh, exactly. Gosh. And, and and it just makes me insane when they trade off some of my favorites and uh you know, and I no. think okay, so you, you won you won the series, you know, and it took you a billion yep. years to get there and then all of a sudden <laughs> you're trading off half of the team that you got yep. you to where you are and it was like what that's the part I don't understand. So Yeah <laughs> you know never know. What are you you never do? know why they do what they do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of hockey as well, you've hosted and participated in the Hockey Helps the Homeless Tournament to raise money mm-hmm. for the homeless in Vancouver. So right. what makes this particular cause so important to you? 
Uh, well, I'm, you know, I can't speak for everyone else in the rest of the world, but for sure in Vancouver, there is quite um, a growing problem with, you know, people who can't either afford housing or, you know, we have one of the highest, um, I guess, per capita, you're looking at probably the highest problems with, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, I'm blanking now. Um, you need naloxone to, it's not meth. It's, uh, oh, fentanyl. There we go. Fentanyl overdoses. So, you know, which is, you know, people are getting into drugs in the east side and then and then they're either getting themselves into a place where they, they, they just don't have a place anymore to live because they've put themselves in such dire straits or they, they just come from hard times or, again, just the housing crisis because it is so expensive to live up here that people who you wouldn't expect to be homeless are suddenly in a position that they would be considered homeless, you know, like living out of their car or what have you. So it's something that I see on a daily basis up here. And you can see that they're trying really hard, you know, as the city province, they're trying to trying to help them, but it's just growing at a rate that is just unbelievable. So seeing it, being around it, when this kind of came about to have the opportunity to participate in this, it was a no brainer. And the work that this particular charity tournament does every year is insane. I mean, over the past 10 years, they have raised something like two point, I can't remember the exact number, but it's like 2.5 or $2.6 million for all across Canada. But every city that the tournament takes place in, all the money from that tournament goes right back into things like, you wouldn't even think of things like this year, they showed us a video of, um, there's a particular place that has a storage unit for people that are homeless, that they can come in and put their stuff in just what we would consider, you know, just a bin that you get at Home Depot, no big deal. To them, that's everything because then people can't steal their mm. stuff and it's free for them, you know, so they don't have to worry about sleeping with it or trying to stay awake for hours on end so no one steals their few possessions they have. Little things like that, that this year in alone, they raised over $500,000 in one day to be able to put right back into the community. So, it's something that when it was brought up to me, it just, it made complete sense. And it's something that I, it tugged at my heartstrings a hundred times over. And then you add in the hockey component and I went, Oh, hell yes. Come on. <laughs> no, no brainer. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you for doing that because it, it's true. There's too many homeless people in this world and, uh, not enough resources, so thank you for doing that. Well, that's it. That's it, exactly. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're going to switch gears just a wee bit here. <laughs> sure. Yeah, totally. <laughs> You're in two Christmas movies this holiday season, yep. <laughs> which we are thrilled about. Yes. Uh-huh. Coming, yeah. coming, coming up is Christmas Lost and Found, which airs on Lifetime December 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central. And share with us, if you can, about your character and the premise of the movie. Sure. So, okay, so the premise of the movie is uh, the character Whitney, who's played by Tia Strakar, if anyone watches The Good Place. She is yes. coming home for the first time in a long time. She's going to spend Christmas with her grandmother, who's played by Diane Ladd, who is amazing. We'll get back to her. Mm-hmm. She comes home to spend Christmas with her and then, you know, she's struggling with some stuff with her job, with life and all of that. And she decides to set up the Christmas tree. But in doing so, she actually throws out a box of ornaments that have been in her family for years, starts to panic, doesn't want to tell grandma that she did that. And all of a sudden she is going on this huge scavenger hunt because they can't find them. And then sun- suddenly these notes start to turn up saying, you know, giving her clues as to how to find each individual ornament. So something else is going on. Now, throughout this, uh, she comes across this woman who has a long-standing family department store, which is my character, Gloria. And Gloria is in need of some assistance with the window decorations and all that. Of course, throwing a wrench in Whitney's plans because poor Whitney's just trying to collect all these Christmas ornaments before her grandma finds out. So I wrangle her in to work for my company. And throughout this whole process, it turns out, well, I won't give it away, but throughout this whole process, the whole point of the film yeah. is that Whitney, Whitney, I was like, whoa, keep your mouth shut, Lisa. Um, I'm almost, I'm almost going there. Um, the whole process is to just help her really understand what is important in life. So if you really want to know what happens, you have to watch the whole movie. But, uh, yeah, I get to, for one night, I got to own Holt Run Through. They, they, we shot overnight, and I walked into this beautiful store, and I was like, this is mine. <laughs> So Gloria is oh. the woman whose family basically owned Old Renfrew, and I was like, yes, please. So it was great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> well, 
you know, your other movie that that we had the privilege of seeing you in already this holiday season is Reunited at Christmas. And I believe, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, that this is the third time working with Nikki DeLoach. Is that correct? Yes. Nikki D is officially one of my favorite humans. We worked together, oh gosh, we had a dream of Christmas for Hallmark a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And it was an instant love affair, like instant sisters. And since then, we just kind of, I don't know what to say other than we pretty much are sisters. Like whenever I go down to LA, I stay with her. When she comes up to Vancouver, she's I'm one of the first phone calls she's making. We just, we get along so great. And so she, she came up with the story. She put it all together and the cheeky little monkey, she didn't tell me I was staying with her this summer and she never once mentioned anything about, Oh, I'm, there's a part for you in this. She just talked about this awesome story she'd created. And I, you know, didn't bother asking because I know Nick and I know she would have, if there was something that she wanted me to know, she would have told me. So when she called me, I went, hey, do you want to be in my movie as my sister? I went, of course. <laughs> so it was easy, easy, easy to work with her. She's just the, probably the kindest, funniest human under the sun. So it's such a, it's just such a treat to get to work with her again. But yeah, it's her well, first time. In- I didn't realize that this was her story. So she wrote the story? Yeah, she came up with the story. And then, I mean, what they'll do is they have one of the writers for Hallmark kind of work, work it with you. Cause they're very clear mm-hmm. on their brand and what they, you know, what type of stories they tell. So it's those little writers are like little magicians. They know exactly what they're doing. So they right. worked with her and, and yeah, they put it to paper and she executive produced for the first time and she kicked butt at it. So I'm sure it won't be her last time. Oh, Nick, the whole reason it all came together was all Nikki, which is awesome. Well, it, I just I happened love Nikki. to watch. I'm sorry. I was, I was just going to say, I'm, I just watched that movie this past weekend again. It's one of my favorites. Oh, well, here's the trippy part. We haven't, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't? I'm in Canada, so we get it on the 24th of December, and they're really good about sending out screeners and stuff if you ask, but just it kind of snuck up because the date got pushed a little bit sooner, which was great because mm-hmm. then people get to see it yeah. sooner, but it was That's supposed right. to come out a little bit later, so... So we didn't have time to even ask for a screen or anything. So I've seen clips of it. Like Nikki was sending me everything she could in terms of having little clips of it. And it all looked awesome. But it was funny because I'm live tweeting and I'm following along. And they're like, oh, and then this happened. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that. I forgot about that. <laughs> or this happened. And I'm like, yeah, sweet. I'm glad that made it into the movie. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to see it, too. <laughs> well, one of one one of the reasons why I asked you about Nikki is because I absolutely love seeing you guys on screen together. I mean, if you're so right. If if people did not know that you weren't related in real life, they would believe that you might be or could be or are because yeah. it's you just are so natural on screen together and and it's one of those things that kind of you you wonder, God, they've got to be best buddies off screen." I mean, you know, it just comes yeah. across that way. But um, yeah, but for sure. This is kind of I've thought this several times that Hallmark needs to create a series just for you two, and it <gasps> is oh, start that <laughs> rumor instead. That would be amazing. <laughs> oh, I would die to work with Nick every day. That would be amazing. Yes, please. <laughs> this is the second TV I think that you guys have played sisters in. So it was like. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this would be an amazing series. But if they did, if Hallmark was to create a series for the two of you, what do yeah. you think would be a good theme? Um, a good scene or a good theme? Which one did theme. you say? Theme. Oh. oh, theme. Well, we did actually, it's funny that you mentioned that because we kind of floated around a couple ideas the last time we were together about pitching something to Hallmark for the two of us. And it, it uh, I mean, it had, it had Nikki in the more kind of like, straight edge very uptight lawyer who then um is forced to go back and live next to her cousin next door um and then my character we kind of floated the idea of it being more of like she's the elementary school teacher who is obsessed with dateline and at three in the morning is showing up at nikki's you know not her door but literally showing up in her bedroom because she crawled through the window because she saw something creepy on dateline and just kind of like the juxtaposition of the two which this is a horrible elevator pitch, but when we're talking about it, we're like, it would be great if there was some kind of like a fan, almost like a fan. Um, a, you remember, I don't know if you guys had this, but we had Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, where the fans would kind of pick what they were going to see next or what was where Carmen was and all this. It would be great if there was something like that using 
characters that her and I could pitch to Hallmark where you're bringing in people from the other shows, somehow incorporating them in. We haven't quite formulated it yet fully, obviously based on my explanation, but it was one of those things that we went, this hasn't been done yet and we would love to work together. So um, hearing you say that, it would be amazing if her and I can continue working on, you know, formulating more of an idea and, uh, and taking it to Hallmark. Cause I, I would die to work with Nikki every day. I mean, it'd be, it'd be like going to camp with your best friend every day. Who would say no to that? So That's yeah, true. So and we'll, we'll see. It's we'll see it percolates. You got this kind of, <laughs> bounced around some ideas along those lines of course I had no way of doing that but maybe this is kind of an affirmation that down the road this is going to happen so yeah well the other the other person too that we said we had to throw in was Andrew Walker because we as a group we worked together twice (laughs) and we're kind of three peas in a pod and Nikki and him are so funny together their families are very good friends and even like when I go down there I see him and the it's just such a good trio that we went we've got to come up with something for Walker and the two of us like it has to happen (laughs) you know and and I'll just say this because um I'm a fan of Andrews as well and but the three of you have I'm really right yeah and he's such a nice guy like, you keep yeah. hoping that he's not going to be a nice guy because he's super attractive and he's lovely and charming, and you're going, are you kidding me? That's just Andrew. <laughs> like, yeah. That's just how yeah. he is. He's great. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. Keep going. Keep going. Hey, okay. but I was just going to say that there are so many, you know, what you call model couples on Hallmark, and but mm-hmm. to me, Andrew have the best chemistry of any that I've seen, and there are a lot that are up there with great chemistry, but yeah. every movie they are so dang believable in the roles that they play and um so yeah you guys need a spinoff the three of you (laughs) well i think if if hallmark fans rally for that they get what they want that's what i've learned with hallmark but it has to come from the fans it doesn't always come from the people in the film so i would say if hallmark wants that or hallmark fans want that ask for that and you'll probably get it (laughs) that's right well that'd be fine with me and and it kind of sounds like what you and Nikki have been bouncing would be great on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. You could turn around and make some kind of a mystery thing out of it in a yeah, different well, way. Yeah, that's what we're thinking. Done. Yeah. Suggestions so. welcome. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I might start picking now. So now that we've talked, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Exactly. That. Well, Sorry, we like again, to you cut out. Sorry. Hello. We like to Hello? tweet during the movie. Oh, there we go. Hello. Mm-hmm. Are you there? We're back. We're okay. back. We're good. <laughs> we like to tweet during the movie, so we could all, you know, we can throw things out there like that. That's not a problem. And and oh, we sure. know Hallmark pays attention, so you know. Oh, we're do they ever? Out there. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you. That would be wonderful. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, you were in five Murder She Baked movies with Allison Sweeney on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, and I think that's mm-hmm. a record um, for the most <laughs> recurring role. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> and we all know that Allison can really cook and bake, and I'm wondering if the yep. cast was treated to any of her baking, and what is your favorite dish in general? Ooh, okay. Um, yes, Allison is a fabulous cook. No, I hate to say it, but because she was up in Canada filming and not at home, we did not get to eat any of her baking. <laughs> but I have been privy to, I have been privy to um, when I went down and saw her down in LA and we went hiking and stuff. She made a wicked cup of coffee, so that I will take. And then because that's my favorite. And uh, in terms of my favorite dish, oh man, do you mean you mean to bake myself? If I was cooking, is that what you're bake, asking? Bake, eat anything. Ooh. Okay, well, if I was um, hmm, if I was cooking, I love, this is going to sound hippy-dippy because it is a vegan dish. I'm not particularly vegan, but I think the vegan food sometimes, it's really different ways of cooking things. So sometimes you get exposed to different flavors and stuff you wouldn't normally. And there is a Jamaican, um, what is it called? Jamaican jerk mango black bean salsa um, tacos, which is, to die for if anybody oh is interested yeah check it out on i think it's i think of all places it's the forks over knives meal plan my husband every now and then will download amazing recipes from there just to try he loves to cook so it's something he'll spice it up but um yeah so jamaican jamaican jerk mango black bean salsa tacos 
amazing. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of baking, baking, I, my grandma taught me to bake good old fashioned apple pie. And that's probably the one that I, to this day, remember and love the most making because it's such a, it's such a long process. You can't fudge your way through it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole day. Like you, you commit to it. So that would be in terms of baking what I like the best to make. Oh yeah, that all sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. That whole Jamaican jerk jerk. Oh, I love jerk so chicken good. anyway. And <laughs> yeah, I'm like you, I'm so not good. really vegan, but that does sound like the the whole shoot and match. You know, the jerk chicken without the chicken. Oh. I mean, I do it in heart. As a yeah, you can you can wow. add chicken if you want, but it is so good. Whew. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah, that sounds you won't amazing. Even miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. um, coming up, we are going to get to see you. You'll be seen opposite Chrissy Metz. Topher Grace, Mike Coulter, and Josh mm-hmm. Lewis in the television series Breakthrough on Fox in 2019. And mm-hmm. uh, can you share anything with us about this series and your character? Sure. It's actually it's a feature, so it's not a series. It's a one-off. But it okay. is based, it's based on a true story of a boy who fell through, um, I believe, I'm going to mess this up, late, it's not, I don't know if it's, I can't remember if it's like Michigan or it, it, it's a very famous lake. I should know this, but it's blanking my memory. Uh, it's a young boy who fell through the ice and he was pronounced dead. And his mother, who is played by Chrissy Metz, would not let them let it go. She just said, I'm going to sit here and pray for him until he wakes up kind of thing. And at first the doctors were really, really concerned that she was, you know, just kind of couldn't let it go. But she sat and prayed for him for hours. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, he woke up. So mm-hmm. there's a very specific line in the film where one of the doctors he says, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember the exact line, but it says something along the lines of like, boy pronounced dead, mother prays, son somehow wakes up. And it's it's a true story. You can look it up in the news, this boy John Smith. But yeah, Chrissy Metz plays his mother. And then there was this pastor named John, um, who or Pastor John Noble, pardon me, who stayed with him at the hospital. And him and his family had just moved to town. And there was a little bit of animosity between Chrissy Metz's character and Tover Grace's character in real life, but this really brought them together because the pastor refused to give up on the family kind of thing. Like he, he you know, you're one of, you're part of my, um, my church and I'm going to take care of you. So he wouldn't let go. So I played Tover Grace's wife, who is a real person, Paula Noble. And she was one of these, she's just so good about just saying to him, you know, whatever you need, whatever time you need to be the hospital, I got this. And then she organized everybody at the church to do all kinds of support rallies and, you know, um, band together to help the family. It was just, it's a really beautiful story. And um, I, I didn't quite understand the um, extent of the story, but once I, I signed on to do it and I read the book, you're just blown away. Like, this is real people. This isn't a made up story. And, and, uh, we got to meet the real, for me, I got to real, the real pastor noble in, um, when we were shooting and he just said to me, he's like, my wife's just like, he's a little spitfire. And I went, well, that's probably why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so it, worked out, it worked out great, but I'm, I'm really excited for people to see that when it comes out Easter of, of next spring. Oh, so hopefully wow. everybody likes it, but definitely check out the story, you know, go on the internet and check out the story ahead of time. So you kind of have a point of reference, but I think, I think people will be really pleased with it. Oh, it sounds something like we're definitely going to be watching. Um, mm-hmm. Anything, I, I I enjoy watching movies that are based on true stories, and especially mm-hmm. when there's a happy ending. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I can't tell you the ending, but if, but you can find it on the internet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you, but Google can. <laughs> like to know things ahead of time and you know like when I post on my Facebook about what's coming up you know spoilers and stuff like that I post Mm -hmm. them but I don't read them I'm the total opposite do not tell me what's coming up because I'm going to smack you upside your head so I'm with you I'm with you like I don't want to know I don't want to know yeah I know thank you Well, besides your wonderful career in acting, you've recently opened a film studio called Tri City mm-hmm. Film Studio, and you yeah. also produce with Kafka Pictures, along with Emmy Award-winning producer Jim Rapsis. And I hope I said his mm-hmm. name correctly. You did. You did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any particular way of choosing films that you'd like to produce? Um, well, to be very honest, we our company is actually launching 
tomorrow at the Whistler Film Festival. That's why oh. I'm up in Whistler right now. So this is a whole new adventure for all of us. But um, what we've kind of been, what we're doing and what kind of we're looking to forward to doing is really helping people who you know, maybe in the past have had trouble getting their work off the ground for whatever reason is being able to help reach out. Because in, in Canada, it's a little bit different in the States. We don't normally have private investors up here. It's a lot of, um, you go through companies called Telefilm and there's a couple others that you're not that, I don't want to say you're limited, but you, you definitely, it's, it's not the same process as in the American system with film. So what we're doing is to, what the Alicia Kafka who started this whole company is doing is trying to bring that process up into Canada because that should really, and hopefully will really open doors for a lot of people that previously couldn't get their work to a certain, um, you know, whether it be distributor or, you know, someone like Netflix or Hulu or whoever. So uh, we've just been pouring over scripts for the last, I want to say, the last month or so nonstop, just trying to, you know, pick the ones that really kind of touch you or move you. And and it's interesting because everybody has their own taste as to what they think would, would make, whether it be a great film or a great series. Um, and then Tim is the one that kind of comes in and goes, because he's the one that, you know, he's, he does a lot of the distribution and stuff. So he comes in and goes, okay, hold on, hold on a second here, guys. We need to tweak this. We need to look at that. So it's a good balance. But as for me personally, I always err on the side of comedy. I'm like, what can we make that's funny? So <laughs> sometimes they have to yeah. come back and go, okay, Lise, like we just need to really look at what, what makes the most sense at this moment. But um yeah, it's it's uh, for me. It's always always that geared towards comedy, but in general, we're just really excited to get things off the ground first thing tomorrow morning. It's a big launch for us, so I appreciate you even mentioning it. That's amazing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, and congratulations. Yeah. I look forward Thank to you. everything that you put out, um, especially yeah. comedy. That is number yeah. one on my list. So oh, God, I absolutely love, you. love comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you and, you I and love me both. To laugh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know when you feel like crying, watch a comedy. You know, well, that's even exactly when you're happy, it. Watch a comedy. So there you go. You got it <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, before we wrap this up, um, we always like to play a little game called a five-question lightning round, which is, in Ooh. our case, it's going to be Christmas-themed because this is a Christmas show. Um, okay. And so, it, you know, we try to keep with that. But uh, there are no wrong answers. It's very – it's a lot of fun. And uh, you just answer whatever comes to mind. Um <laughs> <laughs> and it can be as lightning as you want it to be. So, you know, okay. just, just go there. All right. First question is your favorite Christmas tradition. Getting up on Christmas morning and going for a walk. We walk our dog. We put Bailey's in our coffee. And my husband and I walk our dog out in the snow. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Yeah, well, and if more eloquently, we take her to the local dog park first thing in the morning with Bailey's in our coffee. That's a better way to put it. As opposed to just like we plop yeah. her in the snow. You had me <laughs> you go to snow. in your coffee, right? <laughs> we just throw our dog in the snow and get drunk on the curb. Pretty much Christmas morning at our house. <laughs> hey, sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, question two. <laughs> your favorite Christmas song? Favorite Christmas song? Uh, mm-hmm. Feliz Navidad by Boney M. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. All right, your favorite Christmas movie? <gasps> oh, uh, do, 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 do. you got to go with, uh, what was the Chevy Chase one? Everybody watched it a million oh, times over. Christmas Vacation. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's it's the classic. Everybody's seen it. Everybody knows it. But recently, I will say, close second, I've really fallen in love with horror movies because I like the fact that it takes so much um, specific technicality to make something scary. And I love, love, love Krampus, of all things, which is a, um, um, oh, what are they called? The big horror company. I can't think of it. Oh, Blumhouse. There we go. So it's it's totally other side of the spectrum. But I would say Christmas Vacation and second would be Krampus. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> totally random, but there you have it. <laughs> All right. Next hot toddy or hot chocolate? Oh, hot both. <laughs> uh, hot, start with a hot toddy, round it off with seconds, hot chocolate. Yeah. With perhaps well, more you, Baileys. <laughs> when you said Baileys at the coffee, I was like, well, I know which which, which way she's going yeah. on the hot chocolate. <laughs> Depends <laughs> what's in right. your hot chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. There's no wrong way to add Bailey's to anything, let me tell you. Exactly. Um, Thank you. And last question, white lights or colored lights? Ooh, 
white lights inside the house, colored lights outside the house. That hey, would be my answer. But the me. more lights, the better. Yeah. <laughs> and while you're sipping your Baileys and your coffee or your Baileys and your whatever, it's it's all yeah. good, you know. And, exactly. Um, exactly. <laughs> That and the dog's really... stuck in the snow. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> Mama's drunk and forgot her. I'm going to have all these people from the different animal shelters calling me, being like, what's wrong with you? I love my dog. I take very good care of her, just so you know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. okay. That completes the lightning round. Oh, Thank you for playing it. Um, we appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, no problem. But... No problem. Hey, you and... ladies are awesome. Oh my gosh, Lisa, we have Thank had such you. a blast with you. You are you are awesome, and we love everything you do. We're excited for what's coming oh, in 2019. And can't wait to see the movie coming up on Lifetime very soon. So it's just going to be great to see what happens with you as you go forward. Thank you so much oh, for being Thank you, and thank you for all your support and everything you do for all the other actors as well. It's, it means a lot to all of us, so thank you, thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, you're welcome. Cool. And, and happy cool. holidays to you and your family. Oh, right back at you. Yeah. So hopefully we'll chat again soon. Oh, yeah. Sounds great. We'll keep in touch. (laughs) Okay, cool. Um, I will talk to you later then, ladies. Have a great night. Thank you, too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, guys. Don't leave us yet. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Christmas Movies. That's X-M-A-S-M-U-V-I-E-S. And also like our Facebook page at Christmas Movie Spotlight. Don't forget that's spelled M U V I E S. And follow us on Instagram at Christmas Movie Spotlight. And don't forget to check out our website, Christmas Movie Spotlight.com. That's movies with M U V I E S. Christmas Movie Spotlight.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week. <laughs>